Hey guys, my name's Ian. I'm a filmmaker from Chester in England, and today I'm going to give you 10 tips about stock filming with your DJI Mini 3. If you've got the other drones, Air 2S or Mini 2, then still be useful, but there'll be tips three onwards, okay, so you, you can move forward. I've been doing stock now for six years, and I can remember how difficult it is to start with. You're thinking to yourself, is this just going to be a waste of time? So these tips are really going to help you cut out a lot of the time wasting and sort of things I'd have loved to have heard when I first started. You know, the first few months I've sold very little and eventually built up a solid portfolio and it became my main source of income. I even had some shots on Netflix such as I Am A Killer and Unsolved Mysteries. So your work can get out there. Tip number one is to focus on landscape filming. Now, you would think with all the TikTok and Instagram reels and everything, there will now be a demand for vertical video and having it on this drone, it'd be very tempting to think this is an opportunity. But actually, I decided to speak to Pond5 and they've said right now there isn't a huge amount of demand for vertical video. Now, you're welcome to upload it and I've personally uploaded a few videos just to see how it does but I am going to save any vertical videos I shoot onto a hard drive. Tip number two, this is again specifically for the Mini 3, is to think about the upward facing gimbal. Stock footage is very competitive, there is a lot of work that's been up there for a long time but this gives you the ability to capture shots that have never been seen before or would have been very difficult to capture before. So let's just give an example wind turbines. Now there is a demand for these shots but there's a lot of competition. With the upward facing gimbal this gives you the chance to get to higher up objects in unusual angles and just might give you an edge above the competition so think about that, think about how you can use this. Tip number three is for stock video you really do need solid shots, technically solid shots. You don't want to have any jerky motions. A lot of beginners I feel like they send the drone up and then they want to have a look over here, they want to have a look over there. You really, think about in Hollywood, a lot of just going forwards or doing circular shots, really popular shots and I've found with stock footage that, that sometimes the, the simpler shots are better but you do want to have all the you know, good exposure, recommend using ND filters, I use Freewell, it's great because it gives you a pack. So just no problems with the footage, that'll save a lot of rejection from the creators. Tip number four is when you want to shoot, think about you're going to get to a certain area, you've planned, I want to go here, I want to capture the lake, I want to capture the buildings, I want to capture these things. But also think about minimalism. In this shoot here, I just I arrive and straight away I film the trees first. Because otherwise if I'm focused on capturing the lake and capturing this, this lovely abbey, I'm going to forget about filming the trees, which probably have got a better chance of selling in stock. But like I said, this gives you three different opportunities to sell all in the same location. Look for ideas from television and also documentaries. It's fine to look at the stock sites and see what's up there, but you actually want to look for gaps in the market where maybe you've seen, I've done it where I've looked on a documentary and seen something and then create my own version and stock producers haven't done this before. Try and incorporate people in your shoots. Think about people riding on bikes, extreme sports. I did a wakeboarding shoot the other day. These sorts of things have a real use case and gives you an opportunity to just create some more dynamic shots where you have a focal point. And I would recommend getting a model release form for these. So you can get, there's plenty of online apps you can use. Very simple, just explain to people what it's going to be used for. And it just gives more of a story to your shots. And also, if possible, incorporate your shots on the ground as well with this because that's amazing for the people looking through them. If they're able to go from a normal shot then to a drone, that will really give you the edge and be able to create a story afterwards and use your shots together. The next tip is to think about the time of day that you film. Now, I really like filming in golden hour because I feel like it just gives you so much difference in how the lighting looks in a short space of time. It's almost like you're getting three shoots in one. The worst thing is going out at 12 in the afternoon, bright sunshine, everything just looks dull and really doesn't give you much of a chance for your shots to stand out. I would also consider doing overcast weather. It can give you really moody shots, kind of like almost like Game of Thrones, 
it all depends on what the story think about the use case and then the weather adapt it towards that the weather it's almost like your own lighting crew and by planning when you're going to do it you're telling the lighting crew what you want them to do the next tip is to do with editorial content and buildings in particular now what i found is that if you're circling close up to a building it's obvious it's about that building and therefore it can only be used in documentaries and news reports. It cuts out advertising. So you do want to get some wide angle shots as well, which even though, as you can see in this, it does include the same building as before, this is actually classed as commercial because you're not honing in on it. So make sure you vary. Don't just focus in on one thing too much and get your shots further back as well. But it's worth uploading some editorial content as well. It can still sell. Just don't expect it to be, probably won't become a bestseller. The next tip is to avoid doing really cliched content such as beach sunsets and ducks at the pond. Yes, sun, beach sunsets are pretty, but I can tell you, I've got actually got a beach shot on Palm 5 in a top selling page and it hasn't sold that much. So what does that tell you about the demand? I would seriously think more about things like cities and also environmental issues. We said before about people. Think of an actual story, not just because you want to create some pretty shots. They might be great for Instagram reels, these sorts of things, but for selling stock footage, unless there's a story behind it. So you could do a beach sunset with a person dancing. That creates a mood and it makes your shots stand out from the pack. So yeah, I'm not telling you never shoot at the beach, but it has to be something specific. Maybe there's a really unique cliff on that beach. Then hone in on that, create something unusual. The next tip is to do with grading. So the way you wanna think about this is you're walking a tightrope and you want your shots to be appealing, have nice contrast, have nice colors, but not too far where you're creating a look because that's the job of the editor. Now, you can upload on the Mini 3, this would be D-Cine like. If you want to upload you, the flatter footage, you can do. I've spoken to Pond5 about this, and they recommend, if you're gonna do that, write in the description that you've also made it available as graded. Now, I started uploading flat footage myself and decided to not carry on because I'm thinking about my workflow and also the aesthetic of the page. So it's entirely up to you. Definitely always upload the graded footage and go, don't go too far with it. So I hope these tips have helped. Uh, please consider subscribing because I've got more content I can share with this about technically how to shoot, how to create the best images. It's gonna be very important. I'll also do a video about is it, should you do stock footage? I'll give you five reasons why you should do stock footage and five reasons why maybe you shouldn't. It's really good to hear both sides of the argument. So I hope that helps and yeah please consider subscribing.